You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University. And from the Northern Television Center, this is NTC News Tonight. Embattled NIU Police Chief Donald Grady has been fired. Grady is the man who led NIU through some of its darkest hours during a campus shooting spree five years ago. Good evening, I'm Natalie Knorr. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Xander Ribier. Now, the university says Grady has caused irreparable damage to the police department and NIU. Here to help us sort out what's behind the stunning development is NTC reporter Scott Hudeck. Thanks, Xander. Well, this isn't the first time Chief Grady has been a center of controversy. But the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, was how he handled a bizarre sexual, sexual assault case involving one of his own officers. That officer is this man, Andrew Rifkin, charged in 2011 with raping an NIU student. He was facing some serious prison time. But investigators later discovered that key witness statements proving there had been no rape had been covered up. Late yesterday, Bill Nicholas, NIU's head of public safety, released a scathing five-page termination letter accusing Grady of being either directly or indirectly involved in that cover-up. The termination was effective at the close of business on February 19th after a thorough administrative review of uh, many different things. In firing him, NIU claims Grady either ordered, encouraged, and or condoned misconduct, that he was negligent in his supervisory duties, that he failed to take immediate corrective action, and that he failed to take disciplinary action against another officer involved in the case. That officer has already been fired. And the policeman at the center of the rape case, Andrew Rifkin, is suing NIU for civil rights violations. Grady himself was not available when we visited his home today. Reaction on campus was far from jubilant. And I think for the students it's going to be uh, a sad day because I think he actually gave us that peace that we needed in order to uh, feel like a family. Grady's attorney says there are other facts that show he did nothing wrong and that he will fight the firing. Thanks, Scott. As we said, Chief Grady has been a magnet for controversy. Reporter Torian Small has more on Grady's battles and triumphs. He was hailed a hero in how he handled the 2008 shootings here on campus, but he didn't always make friends, especially with the Northern Star editors who wrote a sharply critical editorial several years ago calling for his termination. Grady was suspended and that led to some protests on campus. He was later returned to the job until last November when he was suspended again in the Andrew Rifkin case. So what's next? The NIU Police Department is being headed by an acting chief, Darren Mitchell, but already speculation is brewing about if he will be the long-term replacement. Also on the list could be former DeKalb City Police Chief, Bill Fythen. Fythen told us he has not yet been contacted by the university. Torin Small, NTC News Tonight. Thanks, Torian. According to university officials, Darren Mitchell is expected to maintain the position until further notice. The city of Sycamore is facing its own legal issues, along with a company that supplies fuel to United Airlines. As NTC reporter Lindsay Deal tells us, they're being accused of being part of a tax dodge. This small office in Sycamore is dark and quiet on a Friday afternoon during typical business hours. One might think that the employees have a day off or it's just closed early. So what's the big deal? The office, United Aviation Fuels Corporation, is owned by United Airlines and is responsible for purchasing its jet fuel. The Regional Transportation Authority, Chicago's major transportation agency, claims that this operation is a sham because the fuel is actually being bought in Chicago. In the lawsuit, the RTA states that United improperly claims jet fuel sales as taking place in Sycamore because it's lower tax rate than Chicago. The RTA claims that it is losing its source of funding for Metra, CTA, and PACE. A woman employee invited me inside her office today, but declined to comment on camera. On her big wraparound desk, there was lots of paperwork and a computer. She mentioned that when people look into the office windows, they usually see the deserted storage room, not her actual office. The RTA says that the city of Sycamore has agreed to kick back millions of dollars in sales tax to United in exchange for a payment of up to $500,000 a year. NTC News Tonight has reached out to United officials but hasn't heard back. 
United spokeswoman Megan McCarthy said in an email to the Associated Press, we buy fuel in Sycamore. Sycamore Mayor Ken Mundy says he isn't worried about the suit. This has been challenged before and we, we are confident that uh, this being within the law, within the state of Illinois, uh, we will uh, will be fine. The suit is currently in Cook County Court. Lindsay Deal in Sycamore, NTC News. And we have another legal battle brewing in Cortland. Emotions ran high at the Cortland Township building. We couldn't agree on what to do with the county's landfill. The debate is whether to expand or not. They decided to take legal action, putting their faith in a clause that gives townships more authority than county governments and landfill decisions. DeKalb County has already voted in favor of waste management, expanding the landfill into an area only a quarter of a mile away from an elementary school. Angry residents have posted signs and formed groups like Stop the Mega Dump. The motivation is, is partly, for me anyway, is the future generations. It also has to do with um, preserving our beautiful land that we have. Residents will meet again in April to take an official vote. Same-sex marriage is one step closer to becoming a reality in Illinois. Illinois Senate has passed marriage for same-sex couples. And here on NIU's campus, the LGBT Resource Center is a haven for LGBT community. It offers students, organizations, internship, and employment opportunities with a family-like atmosphere. Equality for all people, especially for the LGBT community, and I think that shows Illinois is a friendly state for people to come to. And I think that would only foster a sense of, you know, of a, a healthy business climate for you know, business here in our state, so I'm definitely in support of that. The LGBT Resource Center advocates for same-sex marriage and they're keeping a close watch on the legisla legislation. The Husky bus system has changed its routes and availability. The Monday through Thursday buses will stop at 7 p.m. and the evening buses will end at midnight. The route changes may have an effect on some students and their daily route to class. It's not going to affect me that much, but I know it's going to affect, you know, other students. And I know it's, um, it might be a safety issue for, um, especially like women and um, walking around at night, but it's just something that's needed to help um, save money and make sure that students do have, you know, luxuries of still have, you know, utilizing the bus system. But this is only temporary and will change again by the end of spring semester. So we went from rain to snow to almost freezing. This weather is so unpredictable. Kristen Swiner is here now and I hope we can get some sun because my butt hurts from falling on the ice. Well, I've got some bad news. You might need to invest in a pillow because tomorrow night and into Friday we're going to see some snow and more freezing rain before we see a little bit of sun over the weekend. Well, let's look at our temperatures for tomorrow. You can see temperature in the upper 20s to low 30s and as that snow moves in Thursday it'll reach our area by tomorrow night. I have a full forecast for when we get back. You're watching NTC News tonight. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Welcome back. It was a pretty cold day today. We saw a high of about 19 degrees, but with wind chill values this morning, we're in the near zero to below zero digits and pretty low or pretty beneath that record of 57 we saw in 1983 and even still below the normal we expect for this time of year. We have a large system moving throughout the United States, stumping about over a foot of snow in the central plains and freezing rain in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. This system is going to start moving our way tonight and into tomorrow night. For tonight, we had a large um, system of cold, cold air, and that's what gave us those really cold wind chill values this, this morning and even tomorrow morning. And as that low moves this way, it's dumping snow throughout those central plains, and it's going to head our way through tomorrow as it starts stumping snow in places like Moline and, and then into tomorrow night where it reaches us. We are expecting um, snowfalls about five to six inches. 
and for Friday that low moves right on top of us, so we might see a little bit of freezing rain Friday morning. For tonight, it's going to be partly cloudy, a low of 11 degrees, and some calm winds. For tomorrow, partly sunny, a high of 28 degrees, but gusts are going to be up to 20 miles per hour, so we are going to see wind chill values of about negative 1. For tomorrow night, snow, 3 to 5 inches is possible, but it could be a little bit more, and freezing drizzle as we get into those morning hours, a low of 23 degrees, but again, those gusts of 20 miles per hour. For my five-day forecast, Thursday it's going to be pretty breezy, as I said, and a high of 28 degrees. That snow comes to us on Thursday night and into Friday morning as we reach a high of 34 degrees. We might see some freezing rain in the early morning. For Saturday, temperatures take a dip to 28 degrees, but we are going to see a little bit of sun. More sun is expected for Sunday as temperatures rise to 34 degrees and a high of 38 on Monday, but again, some more freezing rain. That's all I have for you. Let's go back to the desk. I'm not looking forward to that at all. I'm ready for the weather to warm up now. Ex-Governor George Ryan's appeal has been rejected by the Supreme Court. And Jesse Jackson Jr. will be sentenced after pleading guilty today. These are today's state lines. Former Illinois Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. is admitting his role in the misuse of campaign money. Jackson's wife Sandy has also made a deal with federal prosecutors. Both could face several years in prison. He will be sentenced June 28th. The Supreme Court will not hear an appeal from ex-Governor George Ryan over his corruption conviction. The justice system gave no comment in rejecting the appeal. Ryan wanted them to reconsider his conviction based on a decision saying fraud in his case requires bribery and kickbacks. Chicago Police Superintendent Gary McCarthy says officers have seized nearly a thousand guns so far this year. McCarthy and others have said the flood of illegal guns into Chicago is a big reason the number of homicides has been climbing. Hundreds of medical students may not be able to start their residency programs in Illinois this summer. Layoffs in the state office that process license applications have led to delays. Illinois official doctors have been squabbling for months over how to fund the office. And those are today's state lines. Dozens of people injured in a natural gas explosion in Kansas City. And we still don't know if the Blade Runner will be released on bail. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius should find out tomorrow whether he will be released on bail in South Africa. Pistorius is charged with murdering his supermodel girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. His lawyers have challenged a prosecution claim that testosterone was discovered in his home, saying the substance investigators found was a legal herbal medicine. A natural gas line explosion leveled a well-known restaurant in Kansas City, Missouri last night. More than a dozen people were injured. Several are in critical condition. Special dogs were being used to sniff out any human remains in the debris. Apparently, a contractor struck a normal, a natural gas line while doing an underground work in the area. Oregon fire investigators are looking into how an 11-year-old patient caught on fire at Children's Hospital. It happened earlier this month in Portland, where the girl was a cancer patient. She was painting in her room when she caught fire after using hand sanitizer to clean a table. Speculations have been made that hand sanitizers may be the cause for the fire. It's official. Office Depot says it will buy smaller rival Office Max in a stock deal worth more than a billion dollars. There are no details on the cost savings, staff cuts, or store closings. And there is no indication if the stores will operate under both brands or use one name. And that's today's World Watch. Welcome to NCC Sports. I'm Erica Burgess. The women's basketball team played Bowling Green on Saturday and they got worked. The same type of thing happened earlier this morning against the Toledo Rockets. The Huskies lost by two points to the Rockets the last time they played, but this game was a little different as NIU fell 70 to 42. NIU shot 27% from the field in the game, and they even had a stretch of eight minutes that they did not score a single basket. The Huskies dropped to two and 10 in conference play this season. They look to bounce back Saturday afternoon as they travel to Ball State. 
The men's team took the loss to Western Michigan on Saturday, and with a week off, the Huskies look to rebound this Saturday when they return to the Convo to play Eastern Illinois. NIU heads into this weekend averaging 56 points per game. Eastern Illinois giving up 65 points a game, and this could be in the Huskies' favor coming into Saturday's contest. Abdul Nader is averaging just over 13 points per game this season, looking to keep that going into this weekend. It's the first game since the All-Star Game for the Bulls. The Bulls are fifth in the Eastern Conference. They are hoping to finish the second half strong. That all started last night as they traveled to New Orleans to play the Hornets. Rookie Anthony Davis, starting to pick up his game, gets the pass and finishes with the jam. He finished with a double-double, 15 points and 10 rebounds. The game was too close for comfort for the Bulls, but Carlos Boozer and Luol Dang picked up the slack heading into the fourth. Dang led the Bulls with 20 points and Joe Kim Noah had a big game as well with 15 points and 17 boards. Chicago escapes New Orleans with a win, 96-87. Heading into last night's game, the Blackhawks took on the Western Conference rival, Vancouver. Chicago looking to tie an NHL record with most consecutive games with at least one point earned. They made it interesting for Hawks fans last night. Hawks looking to have the game in hand. Marion Hossa gets his second goal of the game, putting Chicago up two. He would leave the game, though, in the third with a concussion. Vancouver making things interesting, Alexander Ed Elder put the Canucks up with one. Then with just over a minute remaining, Kevin Biska rips the slap shot past Roy Emery. So we head to another shootout. Andrew Shaw gives the Hawks the advantage. And Emery with the excellent glove save to get Chicago in the record books. 16 straight games with at least one point earned, no losses in regulation. It was another big night in ten Big Ten basketball. Number one, Indiana, headed to East Lansing to take on number four, Michigan State Spartans. The Hoosiers haven't won in Lansing in 17 years, and it looked like it was going to be 18 years the way things were going last night. But Indiana stormed back in the second half to hold off the Spartans. Indiana getting closer and closer to finishing the season as the top overall team. They hang on and win it 72-68. In sports notes today, the NIU baseball team travels to Reno this weekend to play three games against Nevada. And the NIU softball team heads to Florida to compete in the Strikeout Cancer Tournament. Good luck to both of our Husky teams. And now for today's play of the day. It was an exciting game last night between the Nets and Bucks in Brooklyn. Joe Johnson set the game into overtime with a game-tying three with under two seconds to go. And then this happened. Johnson again with the Drives to the left elbow, pops, locks, and drops it for the game winner in overtime. Smoke and Joe finished with 24 points in the Nets' victory. And his heroism is enough to get our play of the day. That's all for NTC Sports. Let's send it back to the... After the break, NIU students join the Harlem Shake dance craze. We'll be back. I'm in the honors program here at NIU. The Honors House is a place where honors students can live together. I lived in the Honors House as a freshman, so I got to meet people right off the bat. I was with students who were in the same kinds of classes as me. So living in the Honors House just meant I had that group to start off with. Living with other honors students made all the difference in my experience, so why go anywhere else? Northern Illinois University, learning today, leading tomorrow. The Internet's newest viral sensation has now made its way to NIU. Barsima Hall was the host for NIU's version of the Harlem Shake, featuring many students, including a special cameo from Victor E. Husky. Even though the event was planned on short notice, many NIU students took part in the video. People came dressed in bizarre costumes, from horse heads to full-body gorilla suits. Students were allowed to be creative, but the College of Business asked that there be no inappropriate dancing, such as twerking. To see NIU's version of the Harlem Shake, go to NIU's website or Facebook and YouTube pages. Could you imagine me doing that? I would have all the ladies. And I would be the dancing queen if I knew how to dance. We want to thank you for being, all being with us. NTC will return this same time Monday. Enjoy the rest of your evening and be sure to like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everyone.